Undaunted by the driving rain, a sea of faces awaited at the Palisados airport the arrival of a living legend. To some, he was the king of kings, the lion of Judah, even a god. But to most, he was a mild-mannered monarch who had won the respect and admiration of Jamaicans. The air was charged with excitement as anxious, expectant faces searched the skies for the first glimpse of the great silver bird that would bring their hero to Jamaican soil for the first time. The Rastafarians, who are easily distinguished by their long beards and unshorn locks, and who worship this figure as a deity, were present in full force. boisterous, tumultuous welcome ever given to any visiting or local celebrity, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia, arrived. That this historical date of His Imperial Majesty a visit to Jamaica, four consecutive days in April. Yes, that memorable moment and you know, the significance of that historically, spiritually and culturally, yes, is something that will be forever unfolding. Seeing, because when people understand the visit, the royal visit, yes, the royal visit of the 225th, and what we're going to find happening is that year after year, and even like this century coming, up, people who, who never understand what's going on. Because as life goes on, people get to more knowledge is unfold, more wisdom is unfold concerning the King of Kings. But right now, the whole world is, say, is acknowledging, you know what I mean, the Ikes, that he is the first, the first and only King of Kings to stand in righteousness. His Majesty is a champion chess player. His Majesty, life is a journey. So we say, Observe the four days, because that's going to be four days of power. Them four days there is a different kind of science of a goal upon them four days in Jamaica. And to be a part of that, to be anywhere near that, sure we say it's, it's, it's a blessing, more than blessing. Anybody who's, who's ever a part of that will receive a blessing that they'll never forget. It's a message, it's only been a part that you won't be able to explain the joy because. Certain missions are sacred missions that can only be done by a sacred people. And many people, you know I mean, people now are still trying to fathom the hikes of that visit and what that visit meant. This is what I said, to, you know, to, to, to visit I and I and the elders them who did receive medals. This is what I said, who met his imperial majesty, the elders them of Rastafari, who met the king of kings. And in acknowledgement of his majesty, we affirm that Ethiopian Jamaicans are one people, one and the same people. You can enslave as was done for 300 years the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. You can imprison the bodies of men. But you cannot shackle or imprison the minds of men. How do you, how would you sum up the benefits of this exhibition in terms of reparations? Yeah, I think real tangible benefits are a recasting of Rastafari, a, a, a renewing um, of, of the image of Rastafari, I think elevating that um, and also uh, a replacing of the contributions of Rasta to the struggle for reparations which is becoming very topical at this time. So I see it as being about a re-imaging, a renewing but also a reconfiguring um, and a recounting of the journey that we have taken and the contribution of Rasta Farai and also his Imperial Majesty and the various legacy uh, legacies that come out of that to um, the development and the advancement of the cause of reparation. So I think it's a very important exhibition I see it also as being able to uh, build bridges because we've spoken about 
some of the misperceptions, the misunderstandings, um, the lack of awareness or knowledge or education, um, and the misinterpretations or misrepresentations of Rasta and the contribution. So I see it as being able to dispel some of these myths, to actually um, correct the narrative, and to see ourselves and a contribution of an aspect of our Pan-African family and movement building in a different light.